Hello all, welcome to part six of Apache POI API training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to write data into Excel files using POI API. Okay, in the previous session, I covered how to read the data from the Excel files using POI API and by using for loops. Okay, so there are two ways I showed you, but now I'm going to demonstrate how to write data okay here reading data but here writing the data into the excel files using poi api here also we are going to use for loops guys that's okay but main thing is poi api how to use poi api for writing the data into the excel files okay it's a continuation of the previous sessions okay if you have uh, if you directly came to this session i recommend you to go through the previous sessions in this training series like understand what is apache poi then understand excel files and what are excel files and uh, how they are related to poi api classes okay uh, how to read the data from the Excel files using these techniques and all. Now, now you can continue with this session, guys, writing data into the Excel files using Py API. Here is a code, guys, okay? So I'll practically demonstrate this code for you from scratch, okay? Whatever the code I have provided in this uh, mind map, okay? W whatever that is available, okay? The same code is available in this notes, guys, okay? You can take the same code, okay? So here, I'm going to demonstrate now. So already the Maven project is there. Inside the Maven project, uh, we have this uh, under SRC test Java or somewhere. We have this uh, class known as demo.java class. Inside that, we have the main method. Now here, I need to use Poi API, guys, okay? I need to write some logic using Poi API so that we can uh, uh, write the data into the Excel files, okay? Here, we are going to use a combination of Poi API and Java code, okay? So first, as you already know, we have XSS uh, workbook, okay? workbook is equal to new create an object for this guys okay this is a workbook like this create an object for the xss of workbook put a semicolon now hold the mouse on xss of workbook and you will not get any import statement the reason behind that is this project by default comes with only java library it doesn't have the form uh, i mean uh, it doesn't have the poi api libraries okay we should be added to the form.xml file just open the pom.xml file of this Maven project and scroll down here. You have dependency tags. Inside the dependencies, just go to the MVN repository. Inside the dependencies tags, okay, just go to the Maven, uh, Maven repository that is the MVN repository and search for POI. Simple three letters POI. Okay, you'll get three things, guys, here POI, POI, OOXML, POI, OOXML schemas. Okay, we have to take the latest common version out of these three things. Okay, so if I go to this py OXML schema here, if you can see here, the latest version is available is 4.1.2. If I go to this py OXML, we have the latest version as 5.2.3, which is lesser 4.1.2. So here also I'll take a common version that is 4.1.2 because we have to take the latest common version among three, okay? So if I go to the POI also, here also we have 5.2.3, but uh, latest common is 4.1.2. I will take all 4.1.2s from these three things, okay? POI, POI, OOXML, and POI, OOXML schemas, okay? Three things. So one by one, I'll take, I'll first take this one, XML schemas, copy this, uh, come back to the formatted XML file under the dependency tags, paste it, okay? Now, once uh, it is done, just close this part and go to the other one that is, uh, Py OXML, this is take the uh, 4.1.2, which is the latest common version across three. Copy this, come back here and paste the dependencies here. Done. Now, third one is required. For that, we'll go here, close this. The third one is simple Py. Okay. Here also, latest common is 4.1.2. I'll take that, copy and paste it here. Done. Done, guys. These three things are done. Save this, save all. Now the uh, libraries for this Py API got downloaded and successfully configured with this project over the mouse on XSS of workbook. For some time, it may not appear over the mouse again. You see, it, it is coming now. Okay, import that XSS of workbook from Py, Py API, okay? Apache Py API, fine. Now, once you have done that, once you create an object for this XSS of workbook, which represents the entire workbook, okay, X, uh, Excel, file and what next we have to do is we have to say workbook dot create sheet create a sheet guys okay you see there is no workbook now in this project there's no workbook right at this moment there is no workbook i want to create a sheet here how to create that sheet 
I have to give a name to this sheet, guys. Okay, whatever the name you want to give to the sheet, uh, I will say sheet one. Okay, some randomly I'm giving sheet one. We'll see that. Okay, whether the sheet is getting created or not, we'll see that. Over the mouse, the, after creating the sheet, it will return you the XSF sheet as an object of the XSF sheet. I'll say sheet is equal to, okay, create local variable. You can say sheet one also if you want, okay. Then after creating the sheet, what you have to do? Have to create the rows inside this sheet. Okay, in this workbook, I'm creating a sheet. Inside this sheet, I have to create rows and in each and every row, we have to create the cells. That's what is up. So how to do that? For doing that, okay, for doing that, so we need uh, we need some data, guys, right? So in order to create rows and in each and every row, you have to create cells means we have to enter some data into that rows and cells. Then only rows and uh, cells will be, uh, rows and cells will be created. Without data, creating the rows and cells is not possible, okay? But here workbook is there, sheet is there. Now we have to create rows and cells. How to create the rows and cells? First, we need data. I told you, right? We need data. How to create the data? I'll be creating a two-dimensional object array. Okay. I'll say data. Whatever the data that need to be entered into this uh, sheet one of this workbook in the form of rows and cells, I'm creating here. Here, I'll create a shortcut representation of the two-dimensional array. I'll provide this thing. Let's say four sets of data I'll provide. In the first set, I'll provide the data of columns. Uh, column, uh, I mean, uh, headings, headings, okay? Column headings, you can say, cell headings or column headings, whatever you can say. I'll say name, comma, uh, location, comma, experience, some random uh, random things I'm giving, okay? Uh, if you want one more, you can create one more also, okay? So, okay, name, location, experience I'm giving for now. Here, uh, name, I'll give as first set of data I'm giving, okay? Under this name, this Arun will come in the second row. This is first row, guys. This is the first row. Now this is going to be the second row. Okay, what I'm writing here is the second row. Arun is a name. Location is Hyderabad. Okay, and uh, third thing is uh, experience. Uh, experience, I'll give some number, guys. Uh, I'll give something like 16. Now come back here. I'll say Varun. Okay. Bangalore. Then here I'll say eight. Okay. Then here I'll say Tarun. Hyderabad, Bangalore. Say Delhi. Delhi. And it'll give some experience as four. Okay. Here, first row, second row, third row, fourth row. And here descends this two dimensional object array ends here. Okay, like this. I'll just I can say tap 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 so that we can organize them properly. It's okay, guys. Okay, to have them. Okay, this this is uh, what the data I want to enter into that uh, Excel file. Okay, the data that I want to enter into this uh, sheet in the form of rows and cells into that uh, Excel. Okay, what I'm going to mention. At this moment in this project, there is no Excel file. Yes, okay, we are going to do that when the time comes. For now, we, we make the data ready. Okay, this data need to be entered into the Excel. Okay, but there is no Excel file here. So now, now the data is available. There are no rows and columns in this sheet. There are no, there are no rows and cells in this sheet. So I have to create rows and cells. Here only sheet I created. In this workbook, I created the sheet, right? I created the sheet. In that sheet, I have to create the rows, and in that rows, I have to create cells. Okay, for now only sheet is created, and data to be entered into that uh, rows create to be created uh, rows and cells is ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a for loop. For first of all, I can know that with this data I can know how many rows will be there, how many uh, cells will be there. I can know, right? So here rows are one, two, three, four. I don't have to count it manually, guys. But what I can do is I can create a variable in rows. Okay. Rows is equal to data dot length. Okay. Data dot. Okay. Any problem here? Here I would put semicolon guys, then it will work. So data dot. Oops, coming. This data dot. Okay. Something going wrong. 
yeah this is fine data two dimensional object array yes right any mistake i'm doing anywhere what is this problem i'll remove this line let's see before that uh, before writing this i'll just uh, figure out the mistakes so here this is the main method it is saying okay already this okay this extra thing came guys okay that's the problem now it's fine int rows is equal to data dot length okay and int cells or columns okay how many columns uh the number of cells in every row is nothing but columns okay data dot data of zero that means first row any row you can take any every row will have the same number of uh columns okay uh data of zero data of one whatever the okay simply say dot length okay this will give you the number of columns now you have the number of rows and number of columns okay you see if you say data of zero that means this is the data of zero in that how many what is the length one two three is the length this data dot length is nothing but how many rows first row second row third row fourth row this is four this is three okay so now for look for int r is equal to zero i have to create the rows guys okay i'm not uh, retrieving the data from the rows i am creating the rows okay for creating the rows we have to use different uh, methods different predefined methods of this uh, apache chipoy api uh, r less than rows semicolon r plus plus okay like this i'll create a for loop now the create here i need to create the row guys okay in the every iteration i have to create a row how to create a row for that i have to say in the sheet one i want to create the row okay in this workbook i created the sheet first sheet i created a sheet one in the sheet one i have to create the row here sheet one dot create row i have to say so here i have to give the index of the row r just give r here just give r here here r is the index of the row okay so it will create the row guys okay with this zero okay zero at the index row that will be the first row it will return you the object of the xsf row uh, that is a uh, I'll say row is equal to, otherwise I'll say row is equal to over the mouse, create local variable. It will add the return type of this method automatically. XSF row, row is equal to sheet one dot create row. Now the row is created. Here create row we are using, okay, to create the row. We are creating the row according to the data available that need to be entered into the sheet based on the, the number of rows and number of columns required. We are creating the rows, okay? Now for every row, in every row, I have to create the cells. I have to create the cells. So int c is equal to zero. Okay, I'm writing this logic for creating the cells, guys. Okay, c less than columns, semicolon, c plus plus, and here start and ending of the for loop. Here write down inside this row, whatever that is created as part of the iteration, external for loop iteration, in that row I have to create cell. Okay. So what is the cell? Give the index of the cell. This c you have to give. Okay. Now Okay, here columns spelling is wrong. Now it will be okay. Now row dot create cell. This will create the cell based on that. In that row, it is creating the cell. For every row, the cells will be created. Okay, because for every external for loop, inner for loop will be created. For every iteration of the external for loop, inner for loop will be uh, uh, run for each and every cell. Okay, so each and uh, all the cells are getting created for the each and every row. It will return you the XSF cell. So cell is equal to over the mouse create local variable. Automatically, the return type of this method will be added here. Now cell got created. Now I want to know. Now I want to know uh, the data that I want to enter. Okay. So what is the data that I want to enter, guys? This is the data I want to enter. Okay. So into this first uh, first row first cell name need to be entered. But how to get that? What is the what is the row and uh, column index of this uh, name? Zero zero, right? This is R. This is zero. So we have to say data of R and C. R is zero now. C is zero now in the first iteration. What is data of R C will retrieve? It will retrieve the name. Okay, it will retrieve the name. It is a two dimensional object. So I'll say here I'll say uh, what I can say object. D is equal to something, okay? Cell data. Otherwise, say cell data. Cell data, okay? Object. What I did? I just selected some option. It came. You just ignore that. Object cell data is equal to cell value. You can also say cell value also, okay? Cell value is equal to okay. Is equal to data RC. 
Now you got the cell value that need to be entered into this just now created cell of this particular row. Then how to enter the data? You see the data can be in the form of string. It can be in the form of numbers. Sometimes it can be in the form of Boolean or whatever the data type. So what I will do here is I will verify what the type of the data that is there in the cell value, what type of cell value it is. So for that, I'll write some logic guys. If, if, okay, cell value, if cell value, instance of what is the type of, okay, instance of cell value is this one. In cell value instance of, it is instance of string. If this cell value is, if this, uh, whatever the data that is in there in the two dimensional array, uh, is a string type, then what I will do is I'll write the logic like this. Okay. Into this cell, into this create just now created cell. Okay. I have to uh set set means insert set cell value. You see, set cell value is there. What is the cell value? This is a cell value. Okay. We already extracted the cell value, which is of object type. So here it's confirmed as string. So I have to typecast it as Okay, it will be converted. Now, LC, cell value, instance of, if it is integer, I'll write like this, okay, it is integer, cell dot, set cell value, and what is cell value? This is a cell value this time, and it should be typecasted with integer, okay, integer. Then, LC, cell value, Instance of, if it is instance of, okay, cell that value provided in this uh, domain object array is of uh, uh, Boolean type, if it is, okay, Boolean. Then you have to say cell dot set cell value. Here, I have to typecast the cell value with Boolean. Okay, convert that from object to Boolean. Cell value, okay, done. These parts are done, guys, okay. Now, after... After you create the sheet, after you create the cells and uh, rows and cells, and then insert the set the cell value, then now the time has come for writing the data. Okay, how to write the data? Finally, you have to say workbook. Okay, here at the end of this uh, external for loop, this is end. Here, write down workbook dot write. There's a method known as write. Now write all this data. Okay, how to? This is expecting the output stream. You have to create an object for file output stream guys okay file output output stream stream fos is equal to new file output output stream okay file output stream is equal to new file output stream import this file output stream from java.io and here write down file file is equal to new file okay put a semicolon now here, hold the mouse on the file and import this from java.io package. And here, uh, write down system dot get property user dot tar the project path. I'm giving some uh, here. I'm under the project. I'm creating a folder known as files folder. Okay, I'll not create an Excel file here. Okay, Excel file will be automatically created by this code. So how? So when you say when you when whatever the path you give here double backward slash files and you just give some name for the excel file just say employees okay employees employees dot xlsx okay like that you give some name and extension of the excel file and take this file and put into the constructor of the file output stream and take this file output stream and put into the constructor of the right method over the mouse ignore for now but in real time you have to use try catch blocks for now i'm ignoring because i'm confident so now after that, I'll say workbook dot close. Okay, close the workbook. Okay, so uh, it's a good practice to close the objects. Okay, if they are giving some warning messages and all of objects. Okay, once the task is done, you can close the objects. Okay, so here I'm closing as part of the best practice. And here I'll write a print statement saying task completed. Okay, uh, task completed. That means task completed means the Excel file got created. Okay, here. By writing this workbook dot write, okay, and by providing this name and all in the form of file output stream, the Excel file will be created automatically with this name and extension. Okay, after the Excel file got created in that Excel file, a sheet will be created with the name sheet one. In that sheet, with this get data, the rows will be created based on the amount of data, the number of rows will be created, and the number of cells will be created. 
and each and every cell, the data will be inserted. If it is of string type, it will be from object type, it will be converted to the string type and then, okay, type tested string type and data will be entered into the particular cell or row and cell, particular row and in that particular row, in that particular cell, data will be entered. Using this for loops, we are doing that, guys, okay? So now this is a, and finally, once everything is done, once a, a workbook got created in the sheet code created with a given name and a workbook got created with this given name and extension in that workbook a sheet got created with that a given name and in that sheet, the rows and cells got inserted with the uh, given data here, okay? Then finally, okay, if everything is going well, this print statement need to be printed, okay? So if there is an error, the print statement will not be printed. You'll get an exception or something, nine, null pointer exception, some kind of exceptions you'll get if the, some prob problem is with there with the logic. Otherwise, uh, you'll get task completed and then you can refresh this project to see that under files folder, an Excel file will be there with that given sheet name. And in that sheet uh, with the given data, the row, number of rows and number of cells will be created with and with the inserted data. Okay, we'll run this code now without any delay. You say task completed. That means we have successfully written the program to write the data into the Excel file. Okay. So earlier I didn't even create an Excel file. Now refresh the project, guys. Refresh the project. If you get an Excel file, then we are good. You see, Excel file got created. Right click, open with system editor. System editor means your computer system editor. Okay. System editor, it will open in your computer machine. Computer machine will open this Excel file. And you can see this Excel file, guys. The name of the Excel. Uh, Excel uh, file is employees.xlsx uh, that we have given here. You see, whatever the name we have given here got created. Employees.xlsx file got created. And in that, the first sheet got created, sheet one. Okay, why the name sheet one came here? Because I create, I said workbook.create sheet, sheet one. Whatever the name I given here that has been added as the name of this first sheet. In that sheet, how many rows? One, two, three, four rows. You see, whatever the rows I mentioned here, right? So first row, second row, third row, four rows, okay? Data dot length is written, written in the number of four rows, that is four rows. You see four rows got created. In that, uh, one, two, in every row, we have three cells. You see, one, two, three cells got created, name, location, experience uh, in the first row. And second row has around Hyderabad 16. You see, the integer values got properly typecasted and inserted into this uh, using the, uh, here, create row is used for creating the rows and uh, create cell is used for creating the cells. And uh, for setting the data, we have set cell value, set cell value, okay? We have used set cell value to insert the data into this uh, rows and uh, cells. And finally, to create the Excel file with all this data and all those stuff, we have used a write method here, okay? The entire Excel file got created, then sheet got created, in the sheet, uh, rows and uh, cells got created with the inserted data, with the data being set. You see, this is how we can insert the data into the Excel files. And the logic for this is all provided in the notes, guys. You can take the logic from here. Whatever the logic I covered is available as part of this notes, okay? So guys, uh, that's all for this session. Hope you have understood how to write the data into the Excel files using POI, Apache POI API, okay? So I'll see you in the next session uh, where I'm going to cover another topic on POI, Apache POI API. Till then, see you, bye-bye.